fifth one is about uh, EA program establishment. There are four phase, uh, four steps in this phase. Step number one is uh, establish the EA management program and identify a chief architect. Step number two is establish an EA implementation methodology. Step number three is establish EA governance and links to other management process. And step number four, develop an EA communication plan and gain st stakeholder buy-in. Um, if you look at this phase, the input will be the need of having an EA program. Of course, uh, the need of having an EA program should come from the executive sponsor, the group of people uh, that is going to uh, buy this uh, EA implementation. Okay, and all the output of this phase is the EA communication plan. So this EA communication plan uh, is basically it's just a report that contains the purpose and vision of the EA. Um, it talks about how the EA will bring value to the organization, and also it talks about um, the documentation access schedule and other information that is important to gain uh, buy-in from the stakeholder. But generally, if you look at this phase, it's about uh, coming up with an EA team. The EA team will be led by the chief architect. So the chief architect is responsible for all of the EA activities. Uh, he is responsible for selecting his team members. Uh, the EA team should, contains, uh, should consist of the consultants, the architects, and also representative from the stakeholder group. If you remember from the first case study, the EA team uh, should consist of the consultants, the architects, the system analysts, and also the representative from the uh, sales department and also the finance department. Uh, the second step is to establish an EA implementation methodology. Uh, the chief architect and the EA team should sit down together and um, think of what will be the implementation methodology to be adopted. Um, generally, uh, when we talk about methodology, it's about steps and processes, but of course, it's, it's just more than that. Uh, but overall, it gives you an idea of what are the uh, steps that you need to take, what are the methods that you need to take. Yeah? So it's a matter of choosing between a public or a private methodology. So if the EA team is engaging with an, uh, a consultant, then the consultant might have its own um, EA methodology or uh, if they want to uh, adopt a more public methodology uh, like TOGAF or Zekman, they can also do that. So the, the good thing about having an implementation methodology, it guides uh, the implementation and the documentation activities, thus it reduces the risk of uh, failure in the EA implementation. Uh, next is about establishing the governance. Of course, in, in when you have a methodology, uh, you need to be uh, you need to know who is responsible for uh, each of the activities or each of the steps. You need to know who is going to make the decision making. You need to know who what are the policies involved. You need to know um, if there is going to be a meeting, how frequent will be that meeting, and who will be attended that meeting. Uh, that is what governance is all about. Okay, the executive sponsor and the chief architect will be involved in establishing this governance. Um, what these steps is about is uh, coming up with uh, eff effective policy, planning, and this is decision making, just like what I said earlier. And also, it involves some strategy and capital initi uh, initiatives. Uh, workforce skills planning and also it involves uh, project management and at the end after all of that uh, establishing the team uh, establish an EA implementation methodology establishing the uh, EA uh, governance then all of that information will be put into a report called the EA communication plan 
this EA communication plan has nothing to do with um, documenting components, coming up with models or anything like that. It's just about uh, coming up with a report that is that can be uh, read by the stakeholders so that the, sta the stakeholders will understand what are they going to as uh, anticipate or what they are going to expect in the EA uh, project. Okay, the activity for the first phase is um, the following. Uh, I need you to uh, answer these three questions. Who do you think would initiate the EA project? I think that I've mentioned that already uh, in the earlier slides. And number two, why is establishing an EA implementation methodology is important? So this also has been mentioned uh, previously, as you know that uh, having an EA implementation methodology, it guides the EA implementation. Um, it talks about or it guides on the documentation process and so on. And what would be the good thing about having that implementation guide? So that is uh, why is it why EA, um, EA implementation methodology is important. Number three, what is the output of phase one? Okay. So in order to know what will be the output, you have to look at the last step in phase one. Okay. So uh, please do this question. Uh, of course, you have 10 minutes to do this. It's, it's, it's a simple uh, questions. Then once you have done, we will proceed with the next phase.